Hey guys and welcome back to another Imagine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over how to create a night vision system. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So you can see in the game here it's very very dark, we can't see anything. But if I have to hold down V or whatever button you want, you can see we now have a night vision enabled in which we can now see a lot better in the dark. So if I don't have night vision on, we can't really see anything. But if we do have night vision on, we can see a lot more and this works very well and it will work in any environment you want so I imagine this would probably look really good in a forest scene maybe in a horror game but in this example I've just got it in the starter area in the third person example map but just made it really dark so again this is what we're going to make today so without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it so the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our character blueprint so for me that's going to be content third person BP blueprints third person character but for you it's going to be third first whatever you've named it just open up your character blueprint. What we want to do next is we want to select our camera which we want to use, add a component, then we're going to add a post process component like so. And this is obviously just going to allow us to change the post process for our camera nice and efficiently. What we're also going to do is create some variables to again increase the efficiency of this and make it nice and easy to adapt onto and change later on down the line if we ever want to. So we're going to create a plus variable here and I'm going to name this one default pp for post process and this is going to become a post process settings variable like so compile and save that and i'm going to leave all of this as it is by default because that is just blank that is my default post processing now if you have changed your camera's post processing volumes by default you want to make those exact same changes here this is just so we can reset the camera after we're done using the night vision then we're going to create a new variable here as well naming this one night vision pp also for post process and again that is going to be a post process settings variable type we'll compile and save that and now we're going to change this night vision post process variable to include the settings which we want so i found some settings earlier when i was testing out this code which i'll give you as well and just really change these about to get them working perfectly for you and how you want it to look in your game so the first thing we're going to do is we want to actually give it that green tint because you always see in the night vision cameras they always have a green tint so we're going to do that so we're going to search for scene color tint here, or scene tint color, sorry. And I'm just going to change this to a nice green color. So tick it to enable it, then change it to a green color, which you want. I'll give it a nice dark green like so. Again, pick any color. Compile and save that. Then we're going to give it a nice bloom effect just to again make it look nice. So if we just search for bloom, what we're going to do is get the bloom here under lens. Then we're just going to change the intensity and I'm going to increase this to let's say three. Again, choose whichever values you want, but this is how I found earlier. And bloom is essentially just the illusion of bright lighting on the screen, which obviously you might have if you're looking through night vision, which is obviously increasing the lighting in an area. Bloom just gives it that more realistic look. And so next up, we want to change the exposure. So we're going to search for exposure bias. Tick that there. And this is what's actually going to make the scene brighter so we can see it. Increasing exposure increases the amount of light we're going to see, so it's going to be brighter for us. So again, the value I found for me earlier was 3, I believe, which is a nice good value I found. It's not too dark, it's not too bright, but obviously just change this based upon how bright or dark you want it. So just again, customize all of this to get it working and looking perfect for how you want it. And the final effect I'm going to add is I'm going to add a vignette onto it. And that is just to again, give it that nice, obviously a vignette, the kind of dark circle you see around the edge. So I'm going to tick vignette image there and I'm going to change this to about 0.6. This goes between 0 and 1. The closer to 1 the stronger the vignette is. So again this is just a nice little effect which you don't have to add but I think it just looks quite nice on there as well. And that is pretty much it for all of the effects I'm going to change for my post process volume. Now you can obviously change as many of this stuff as you want, really get to as much detail as you want to but these are just the basic and main ones which I'm going to be changing and which I'd recommend you to change as well to get it looking good. Again, this is very, very easy to adapt onto and to customize to get it looking great for you. And the last step is we obviously want to then enable this. So what I'm going to do is go to Edit, Project Settings, go down to Input and create a new action mapping, naming this one Night Vision or Enable Night Vision or anything along those lines. And I'm going to set this to the V key, I think. Now you can obviously set this to be whatever key you want, but V for me is going to be good. Then we're going to close this, right click on my event graph, and search for the action mapping we just made, I need my night vision. And I want this to be a hold system. So I'm going to come out of pressed and released. If you want it to be a toggle, come out of pressed and get a flip flop. A will be what I do in pressed, B will be what I do in released. 
So just keep that in mind because that means this will then toggle between them. When you press V, it will do A. When you press it again, it will do B. But again, I want it to be a hold system. So what we're going to do is drag out our post process component we've got up in the top left components list. Drag out of it and then set settings. So we're going to be setting the settings of the post process volume like so. That's going to go into pressed and we're going to duplicate it also going to released or again A and B depending on how you are doing it. And so pressed or A is going to be enabling the night vision and released or B is going to be disabling the night vision. And again obviously where I'm saying A or B that's if you're using a flip flop. So all we want to do is just input the correct post process variables into there. So the default is going to go off of released so the bottom one for me and the night vision is going to go off of pressed so the top one for me. So we'll compile and save that and that is all we need to do nice and simple. So again, we're just setting the post process settings to be these variables which we've just set up and created. So again, now if you want to change how the night vision looks, you can just change this variable here and the same with the default as well. So let's hit play to test this out. You can see it's really, really dark. If I hold V, it's now gonna be a lot brighter with the exposure gone up and night vision come on screen like so. So again, let go, really dark. We can't see anything, especially if I go all the way back here. And then if I hold V, the night vision comes on and now we can see a lot more. And again, if I were to change the exposure, you'll really see what difference that makes. So if I search for exposure bias. If I increase this to six, you'll see it gets brighter like so. That's a little bit too bright. And if I just change it to one, it won't be as bright like so. So again, just change it really for what you want. For me, again, I found three to be a perfect value for how I want it to look. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.